What up, homie G's? We're uh, just picking up, picking up the SS sled. Ignore this tint over here. I'm too cheap to fix it. All right, it's too cheap to fix it. Had to get the, uh, had to get the seal completely redone. Lots of things happening on the seal, but it's good to go. It's good to go. So um, it's ready for any adventure now, in theory. So today is uh, today's video. I think is pretty key. I think this is probably one of the most more important ones, particularly for guy younger guys. Uh, I'm 35. So guys in my in my range may be useful for guys older than that. But I'm at a, uh, a pivotal point in my in my business. I'm gonna separate because I'm a dude. We're gonna separate um, business and, and like home family stuff. So. For women, they're like spaghetti, everything runs together. Men, we have boxes. I got a work box, I got a family box, I got, you know, I got boxes. So in my work box, I'm at a spot in my business where I've got to decide what my next move is because I'm at a, I'm at this weird spot in a startup business where you go from zero to 250,000 in revenue and to get above 250,000 revenue, it's typically a mindset thing. And I've done this before. I've gotten into 550 in revenue, not with this business, but like that's been my max all time, like, you know, so far. Um, and then I got to a, a point where I, I just got smoked at the 550 level because I didn't make moves. I didn't understand at that time that, um, you know, like the team you have that helps get you to, um, to that 500 level probably needs to be removed uh, so you can go from 500 to a million. It's kind of like that no man's land where like 500, you're operating, you're there, you're you're in the game, you're if you got a burger shack, you're flipping burgers, you got a tree outlet, you're cutting trees. And so I'm like right at that spot right now where I'm working in the business all the time and I've got to figure out how to be working on the business more and I also have to figure out what's working and what's not working. Give you an idea. I'm in a weird spot because it's not not working. And it would be much better if it was abundantly working or not working at all. And what I mean by that is, after you get off of the 250 mark, which is kind of where we're at, probably in that 300, 400 range right now, depending on, you know, probably, if we keep everything the way it is now, we'll probably do like 400, 450 this year in revenue. I think target was like 550. I could probably still do it. We're going into April here. Could probably still do it. Depends on what depends on what the sales game looks like, right? But, um, but like the, the meat and potatoes of this, is I'm at a spot where I'm working in the business. I've got a repeatable process. I, the question really is, do I, ha do I have a repeatable, reliable way to bring in new customers, new business? And the answer is maybe mostly. Cause like I've kind of got to the spot where like we have a nice client list built out. We've got good offerings. We've changed our offerings back and forth. So we try to figure out what the offering is. We've stumbled into a great offering, which is multiple acre properties, uh, two grand a day, massive mass reduction with haul off as an additional. And that works out really well. So now the question is, do I put three guys on crews, put them on properties, let them go do their thing and just sell acre after acre after acre? Um, and then how do I replace, like let's, let's play it out to 500 to a million. Okay, and the next move is how do I replace myself as the sales guy and then how do I scale the business? My business is not a perfectly scaling business because if I were to double my revenue right now, I could mostly do it with maybe adding like a truck or an extra machine. If I were to double it from there, I'd have to double all the equipment. And like every rig, every, every set of equipment we run out to a house is gonna be minimum 200 grand. So it's like, okay, well then do I take the retained earnings from a year from now, like that hasn't even occurred yet, and um, and then invest all of it? So do I punt on 25? So, so 2025, do I take all the retained earnings and then double the capacity for, so for 2006, 2026, 2027, I have the ability to go to that next level or does it even make sense? And I'm in that spot where like, Okay, I've got a few things working against me. I have this trend line that's really working against me, which is this demographical trend. We have more people leaving the workforce than coming into the workforce. I need guys that are tradesmen. 
we start our guys at a good salary. Like we start them at a, at a $250 daily uh, like base pay. We go up from there, we revenue share with them. Our top guys are getting, on our top guys on our best days are getting $420 in revenue share. So you run that out, they could make a hundred grand a year if we had, you know, if we were 50 weeks a year, all revenue share. It's not really ideal, not an ideal setup because um, we're gonna have rain days at this the nature of the business. It's part of the part of the things in my business that are unfortunate. So for me, this is a means to an end business. This is not like a transformational, like change in the world thing. Doesn't really need to be because I'm 35 and I'm not over that. I definitely, I definitely have some opinions on what I want the world to look like. But I'm at the spot where I can control my world, and that's what I'm doing. And so the question is, is do I build this thing into a million in revenue and then do I sell it? So I've done some research and I've looked at what does a, what does a tree outlet uh, sell for doing a million in revenue with say 400 grand in gear, 350 grand in gear. And it sells for a little less than a million. So it actually makes more sense to go buy a bunch of them and put them together to get to that level and then build a team around it. So let's explore that. If I go and build a tree team, well, I have great guys. We pay them really well. Uh, I'm having a very difficult time attracting more of those great guys. I had a better time in my 20s when I was around guys that were in my 20s. Uh, the best candidates for us are 25 to 40. That tends to be like really good, skilled, 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 skilled guys. I don't have a network where I'm really around those guys. I'm not meeting them per se at like the gym. I'm not meeting them at church. I'm not meeting them at networking events. The guys I associate with are remote, work from home. One of my best guys is actually taking a job at the end of this week. Um, he's working with us, this will be his last week. Um, he's doing he's doing a work from home thing so he can travel back and forth and kind of snowbird it, which I think is a smart idea. So I'm at this spot where it's like, well, if I build this thing and I get it to a million, I don't really have, uh, I don't, I don't have a, I don't want to say ambition. It's not the right word, but I'm not really trying to have a five million dollar year tree company. Not really. Like a lot of guys, yeah, man, I want to do a ten million dollar year tree company. Like, it's a lot of saws, it's a lot of trucks, it's a lot of guys, it's a lot of firing, it's a lot of hiring. You know, there are other ways. Um, so for me, it's like get it to a million, sell it. What would I do if I sold it? I would start a dump. I would start a recycling facility. I would take my two best guys, I'd bring them with me, you know, whoever those were at the time, if they fit. And I'd, go, and I'd take the mill that I got for it and I'd drop it down on probably, probably, I don't know, $3 million piece of land and some leased, rented, maybe purchased tub grinder. Maybe I'd outsource the tub grinding to start. Uh, wheel loader, excavator. So I'd have two machines. I wouldn't need trucks, I wouldn't need trailers. So if I get bigger, there's a lot of things I don't need anymore. Um, and that's what I would do because my real passion here is like growing food. It's like compost. The market doesn't really agree with me yet. You know, compost isn't something you see on the front of Time Magazine going like, America's gold rush into compost. It's not happening yet. I would like to build something that's, that's prepared to accept the reality of America is already in a famine. You entered a famine around 2006, 2007 timeframe. Uh, you also entered the fourth turning in 2008. It's another video, I've done videos on this, but you entered that at that point in time. And what your elites chose to do was to kick the can down the road. That means that they, they chose to sacrifice. And I say sacrifice, not in a religious text, because this is what drives me nuts about like, you know, like my local church. Oh, Jesus was a sacrifice. First of all, his name's not Jesus, it's Yeshua. The J, letter J didn't even exist until like 600 years ago. So that's a scam, all right? So it's not his actual thing. See, you read the New Testament, it's like call on my name. And you, you know, it's like, well, if you're calling on the wrong name, you're calling on the wrong name, like vibrations matter. So anyway, different rabbit hole, but you'll hear, oh, the sacrifice, the sacrifice. And, and that's like a moral good. Well, sacrifice by definition is trading a higher value for a lower value. And if you do that as an axiom, meaning something that must be true, and you do that continually, then the, then the result is death. If I literally sacrifice a liter of blood for a half of liter of new blood or whatever, and I do that over and over, eventually I'm out. Eventually I have zero, eventually it's death. You could do that with food, you could do that with wealth, you could do that with anything. If, if you sacrifice, trade a higher value for a lower value continually, then eventually you will get to a spot called death where there is no more, it's just, that's it. So different thing, but just to, to frame this context, uh, so I don't want to sacrifice capital. 
Uh, I'm okay trading off capital. I'm okay trading off time. I'd like to trade a lower value for a higher value. I'd like to create. Uh, but I have to also be in tune with what the market wants. The market disagrees with me that regenerative food is like of most importance. Like I think like, dude, there's, we, we have a micronutrient crisis. We, everything's a crisis now. So like crisis is a crap word, but we have a, we are already in a family and a uh, little grind to tell you find it. Um, should probably use the clutch. Um, we, uh, we're already in that spot. Because, I mean, I just had some blood testing done last week and, and most of my levels are pretty good on everything because I mostly have changed my diet quite a bit. Um, but I had the uh, the fake sugar, the aspirin or whatever, off the freaking charts. They're in those cellulose drinks. Yeah, I'm done with those. I used to think they were better than Red Bulls and like you didn't have time to grab a coffee, you know, whatever, grab one of those on a camping trip or something. It turns out I haven't had one in about maybe five weeks and it's off the charts. It's still in my body. It's pretty freaking nuts. Uh, 34 countries in the world do not allow US food imports. Meaning if it comes from America, you're not allowed to import it into your base country, call it France. Uh, because our food is literally poison. Well, the reason it's poison is because we raped our topsoil. There is no topsoil left. If you look at guys like YouTuber, uh, Millennial Farmer, and you ask him, hey man, what's the organic content of your soil? He'll tell you 0.02. It, he has 2% organic matter in his soil. And he goes, that's actually pretty good. Like I got a DM from him. It's actually pretty good. I'm like, that's garbage. Like anything under six isn't even like trying, you know? And, um, and like, well, that's what you do. If you're going to till everything and then you're going to monocrop everything, and you're going to destroy everything. Then you're going to put synthetic fertilizer on it. Then you're going to put pesticide on it. You're just destroying everything over and over. We never regenerate the land like a forest. Like observe a forest. And like what we do with forestry mulching, like we go in there, we take all the dead stuff, we mulch it up, we return it to the soil. We do 10 years of composting in 10 seconds. We're advancing. Like, and we're, we're living in a time in history where like we could do this. And we've never been able to do this before. Like chainsaw was invented in 1957. So we go through two world wars without a chainsaw. 1957, we get a chainsaw, then we get chippers, we get grinders. First time in the world that we can take trees that grew for 50 years and we can make them soil in like 50 weeks. I mean, that's pretty freaking incredible. And we can make that soil, like we can continually refresh the soil. We ain't doing it yet. So I would like to do that. The market doesn't even know about that yet. You know, so, so like for, for a business model, it's not really a business model yet, but I would like, I see this. I know that's where the trend is gonna go. I think that's where the trend is gonna go. I'm gonna do it on a personal level for sure. But then as I as I observe it, I'm like, man, wouldn't it be cool when Time Magazine, if Time Magazine does say, America's gold rush into compost. Well, I ended up building a big, a big outlet that did that. That would be the time to sell. You know, that would be the time to be like, okay, everyone else is doing this now, cool. Um, but anyway, so I'm in this spot where with my current tree company, I've got to decide, uh, do I expand? Because I'm at that spot where I'm like literally at the spot where my old team that got me from zero to, to a quarter mil, they're phasing out. They're literally, Kurt will be the last guy this week from the original team. So he'll be gone and it'll be Trav. And it'll be like, well, now's a perfect opportunity to start a new team, like the next level team. And I've had a difficult time attracting these guys in, even at crazy pay scales. And by crazy pay scales, I mean like 400 a day, base pay, like 100 a year, let's go. Well, Trav, I mean, I like climbing for the company I climb for and yes or no, bro. Like it's, we're going to a mill or not. And I don't, I haven't found a lot of those guys that are like, mm, yeah. So what I'm thinking through is like, well, maybe I downsize it. Maybe I sell off half my gear, still maintain at 250, do more solopreneur stuff for a year or two, maybe two, uh, certainly a year reskill myself into things that I have been putting off, like learning new skills in, like AI, writing, um, like really getting good at copywriting, really good at, get, good at lead generation and sales, like going to sales conferences and like learning new sales tactics and persuasion and things like that. And just specializing in becoming more of a lead generation company, help other tree guys that do or don't have the staffing issues but are operating inside of their own businesses help them get leads and then somehow full circle it back to, I need your carbon product for my future dump or for my, I can do a dump now. I already am on my own property. And kind of pivot from doing operations of, of physical trees 
and scale out to where I just do sales. And then I can work with you guys. If you're in Des Moines, Iowa or whatever, or you're in, uh, I know it's Des Moines, but you know, if you're over there, if you're over in Nevada, you're wherever, it's like, cool, I can work with you. Right now, if you're not in Sarasota, I can't really hire you. You know, like I've had a few people from like way out of town uh, approach me like, oh, Trav, I live in Tallahassee, which is four hours away from us. I want to come work and climb for you or do, do ground crew for you or whatever. It's like, you're in Tallahassee. Well, I'll move there. No, like, anyone who hires a passerby it's just not a wise not a wise thing so so anyway that's what I'm thinking through so I'm at a spot where I continue on so the next two year three year trajectory is get to a million in sales replace myself mostly I'm still gonna be a player but I have to become I had to go from being a player to hiring in really good operators to becoming a coach beyond one mil I don't think I'm gonna do that in this industry at this size at this scale so I think what I would likely do is sell it and then go again, once again, become a player at that recycling level and then redo it from there. Cause I think I can go from 1 million to 5 million in revenue a lot easier uh, with, you know, with two competitors that are in the game in this town and other towns, uh, rather than there's a hundred something tree guys here and like I'm having a hard time get, competing with them for their, for the employee base that is available. So I'm thinking through this and uh, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please like these videos, please subscribe. Liking is probably, liking videos is probably the number one thing you can do um, because it shows more, it shows it to the algorithm, more people see it. So likes and comments are a huge deal. So to you guys that do that, Charge Mopar, thank you so much. You watch all these videos and like you're always in the comments, always liking and like, dude, it seriously helps. Seriously, seriously helps. So I'm gonna back this boat into this spot. That batteries plus, I've gotta get my laser pointer that I use for sales, like definitely, oh yeah, we're just gonna go here. Uh, I gotta get, I gotta get new batteries in it. It's just not, not doing what it needs to be doing. So that's where I'm at. And uh, there'll be more videos and more content on this, but that's kind of my current field position is, we're at a cool spot. Like, you know, even like Kurtz last week, I'm just like, cool, we got another 10K job. We got another 10K job. Like just, they, did, they somewhat keep coming. I almost have a repeatable process to keep them coming in but then I'm having an issue staffing it and then I've got to decide, do I want to expand it physically and like have the insurance and all the things that we have or is there a way that I can reduce it, kind of cherry pick, have the same net profit and then pivot to an industry where like someone like Coach Kurt is available on a work remote program and I can get access to him and the caliber of, of human being that he is uh, in a global sense. It drives me crazy, but it, like the work from home stuff is just like the way culture is going. Finding trades guys uh, for my own operations or just for the house we're building is just difficult. Like it's just like, and over a 10 year period, man, there's gonna be so much money to be made in the trades because there's just no one there. Um, but over like the next 10 month period, the next five year period, I don't know if I want to put that extra burden on me or if I just want to go with the flow. Like if you can't fight them, join them. So that might be the way that I pivot and then it would allow me to do more content and things like that. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you're local and you're like, Trav, I'd run that crew for you. I need a, I, basically I'm at a spot where I, I need someone that would run it. I can do sales and someone would run operations and I would partner with them. Like I would absolutely partner with them and be like, yo, my goal is to scale out of this company so you can come and work and I will like, we can transfer ownership your direction as we go. Like with every revenue dollar, we can just start transferring ownership so I can scale out. So we hit a million, I'm, I'm out. Um, or I just kind of pivot it, hold my current position, allow this selection cycle. I know you guys think there's elections, but it's called selections for a reason. Like the, we, uh, trust me, the plebs are not picking who's running the, uh, the, uh, the GAE, the Gay American Empire. It, this is not something that's done at the pleb level. Um, but anyway, I can allow all that crazy to hopefully wash out and just kind of like fortify my position and be like, hey, we might not grow a ton, but we're gonna grow a ton personally on skills. Um, or I can just go, dude, hammer down, let's go. Maybe it gets that mill in revenue in like a year, year and a half, but it's team and operator dependent. I cannot do it alone, so I have to be able to attract that team and that team is hard, it's a harder team to attract. It's a much harder team to attract than like the lead gen stuff. We're like, hey guys, I need WordPress developers. Well, there's a thousand of them. Pick, pick what country you wanna hire from. So let me know your guys' thoughts. See you in the comments. Peace.